Hey everyone, it's Mary Ann from the New York City Organization of Public Service Retirees. This is video two, debunking Michael Mulgrew in Florida at the retirees. So do you remember when we talked about the HIP rate, that the city had to pay up to the HIP rate for every employee retiree and their dependent up to the HIP rate? The HIP rate is whatever the HIP premium is, is what the city has to pay up to. And it was meant for equality. The city will pay the full cost of health coverage up to the HIP HMO for every employee, retiree, and their dependent on a category basis of individual and family is really what this law is. And it's been on the book since 1967, went into effect January 1 of 1968. What you're going to hear from him now is that he says that this is a shock and it was because of the court case that they had to do this. But this law has been in effect since then. And if they didn't follow it or they were playing, pretending it didn't exist, well, that's on them. But see, the retirees knew that this law existed because many of the retirees helped get it passed. And this is what prevents the city from giving different people, all of the retirees or employees, something different. Everyone had the same thing. It was equality. So I want you to listen to the tape, and then I want to explain it some more. Now, we have a dangerous piece now, because the next thing you say is they said you have to be responsible up to the hit rate. This is the bigger dangerous piece. People don't understand <laughs> this in this court case. Like, why don't you leave it alone? Because it was never tied to the hit rate before. It was in-service, retirees, premium-free health care. Well, actually, Mr. Mulgrew, it was always the HIP rate. Every employee, retiree, and their dependent had health care paid for by the city up to the HIP rate. But see, you know that because you negotiated a reduction of the HIP rate. You suppressed what the city had to pay for your bargaining. That was part of your $3.4 billion in savings was you suppressed the HIP rate in 2016. You did. And you did that as part of your 2014 agreement that ran from 14 to 18. You did that. How could you sit here and lie to all of these people that you did not know what the hip rate is? You negotiated its reduction. You did that. That was how you got your raises in 2014. You did that. And that was in the 2016 agreement as an ongoing annual process to meet the benchmarks that you negotiated. So you absolutely knew what it was. That was it. What, what's the HIP rate? Uh, um, That's the HIP, the rate that HIP charges per person. Okay. okay? So it was, it was never that. We would go into, we would negotiate on a yearly basis with the city of New York and then do all of this stuff. And it was never, it was, it was in service, retirees, premium free. Here's the base plans. Of course, you could pay up for other ones if you chose to. We have members who did, but that was it. Now, the city is telling us when we're trying to negotiate in service, well, we're not paying above the hip rate. We've never heard of this before. This is the first. And you absolutely did hear about this. And you also, the reason why you're denying it is because you don't want to admit that the city will pay up to the HIP HMO for every employee retiring their dependent. And according to the 1992 agreement with Sandra Feldman signed, uh, as she was head of the UFT at the time, that anything above the HIP rate would be paid for by the stabilization fund. But see, you didn't want to say that out loud either because you imploded the stabilization fund. That is what the stabilization fund was for. The city would pay up to the HIP rate, Anything above it, the stabilization fund would pay the difference so that every employee and retiree didn't have a, a, a premium to pay. But because you imploded that fund, you took that billion dollars out of it, uh, gave it to the city for the 2014 round of collective bargaining because you allowed unions to, to, in order to get them to agree to that so that you could get your 2014 contract, you gave them $165 per employee and retiree for their welfare funds from that point forward. So of course, now that stabilization fund is going on a downward spiral and money keeps coming out of it. And the sole purpose of that fund was to pay premium, the difference between HIP and whatever the cost was. 
You did that. But you didn't want to say it. And that's only because of that court ruling. No, and it wasn't because of the court ruling. The law was always there. It was always followed. The city always knew about it, and so did the unions. You also knew that according to the 1992 MLC agreement, that no party, not the city, not the unions, not the MLC, not any party, could unilaterally make a decision. And I know you know that because in 2013-14, the MLC, which you were in at the time, sued the city of New York for making a unilateral decision on an SPD uh, for uh, implementing an RFP for a healthcare plan. And you actually stopped them in court and you knew that the city couldn't do that on its own unilaterally because of the 1992 MLC agreement. So again, liar, liar, pants on fire. At this moment. And what happens, and here's the big one, what happens if HIP goes away, which is almost has three separate times? <laughs> no, it, it really hasn't gone away three separate times. HIP isn't going to go away. I mean, even if you're successful at destroying, which you, I know you tried to do, is tried to kill Emblem Health, HIP will still survive because it is also a community-rated product. People in the public in the city of New York are actually on that plan that have nothing to do with you know, city employment. So they may need to restructure, but I'm sure HIP will exist. See, HIP has been around since the 1940s. I don't think it's, um, at least I'd like to believe, it'll take more than the United Federation of Teachers leadership to implode in a company. So, yes, you can be angry for whatever information you have, but I'm just going to tell you your union will never, ever do anything that will hurt you. We are always. <laughs> oh, my. And it's just, the funny thing is, is protect oh, wow. I am sorry. You they actually all hear you. You have some people clapping, but you have a lot of people calling bullshit on you right now because they know you did this to Medicare eligible retirees. You did that, Michael Mulgrew. You did. Oh, wrong. You are absolutely wrong. Well, why do you rise with Brown, brother? And placate you and say, we're just going to say no, we're going to stop everything. And four years from now, when something bad can happen to everybody, we'll just blame someone else. And then blame we'll you. feel better. You can try. Listen, you think this is easy to do? You can talk to me all you want. The reality is I, I and the group of us who really think these things through are trying to do what we think will keep us safe going into the future. And of course, you basically imploded healthcare <laughs> by what you did. You imploded the stabilization fund. Um, yeah, just really bad things, Michael. It, it's really just, it, it's really a shame that it had to come to this, but it would really be a lot better if, you know, if you did tell the truth. So, So what I'd like to show you now is the 2016 health savings agreement from OLR's website. And this is from fourth quarter, 2016. And right here, you can see HIP rate savings. Based on historical trends, the city's budget estimated a 9% increase in the HIP rate for fiscals 2016 and 17. However, the rate was finalized at 2.89 for 16, 5.98 and 17, before a change to the HIP HMO uh, preferred plan and 7.84 in fiscal year 2018. The HIP rate reduction generates savings as the amount representing the differential would have otherwise been paid into the stabilization fund for all active employees and pre-Medicare retirees. But more so, the HIP HMO preferred plan, this very next line, the transition from the existing HIP HMO plan to HIP HMO preferred plan, effective July 1, 2016, not only lowers the overall cost to the city for employees enrolled in the program, but also lowers the benchmark HIP rate that drives the payment for all employees. The city is obligated to make an equalization payment into the health insurance stabilization fund, jointly controlled by the city and the MLC, representing the difference between the HIP HMO and the GHI PPO. The HIP HMO preferred plan lowers the benchmark HIP rate and thereby lowers the city's obligation to the stabilization fund, meaning savings for taxpayers. Now, 
You can see this $3 million here, this $63 million here. If you look at the top, that was what they were estimating the savings to be for 2016 and 2017. And then, of course, this agreement went on until 2018, and then that's why the savings were even, even higher. So, Mr. Mulgrew, for you to say that you did not know that the HIP rate existed when you negotiated for the 2016 health savings agreement to suppress the rate that the city had to pay across the board, Liar, liar, pants on fire. I rest my case on this one. If I had a mic, I would drop it. There you go. Thanks, Mike. Listen, guys, you need to be making sure your unions are working for you. And if your unions are not working for you, then you need leadership that works for you. You don't need another Tom Murphy hanging around telling you what Michael Mogru wants him to tell you when what Michael Mogru is saying is spewing lies. I just showed you right here. He absolutely knew the truth. He lied to your retirees in Florida. That's two. Have a great night.